the Iranians accuse Israel as being part of or joining in this recent assassination. Why would a country like, why would Israel do something like that right at the moment? No, I have no uh, information regarding who did this. Uh, certainly as former defense minister, I wouldn't know that uh, sort of thing. What I can say is that uh, Fakhri Zadeh uh, was dedicated and focused uh, throughout his uh, entire career on building nuclear weapons for Iran. Uh, there's a reason that he was hidden. There's a reason that the, they refused to allow the IAEA inspectors to interview him. Uh, this guy was not just a ticking bomb. Uh, he was a ticking nuclear bomb. And the world is safer uh, without him. So would the, the position be that you would condone the assassination? Now, as I said, I got no idea uh, who did this. Uh, but what we do need to understand is that the, the Iranian leadership uh, has, has spent over $100 billion on its uh, nuclear weapon program. Uh, and these ayatollahs mm -hmm. dream at night about having uh, nuclear weapons while 30% of their population is in absolute poverty and is dreaming about having a good meal. Um, we have no business with uh, Iran. Uh, unfortunately, Iran continuously over the past few decades has been uh, fomenting terror uh, all around the region and indeed the world. Uh, and and I, I would think that Iran should focus inward because they've got enough uh, economic problems, yet they continue to uh, remain the biggest uh, terror exporter in the world. Can I ask you about Israeli policy towards Iran? Um, is the idea of this rapprochement with the UAE and, uh, and, and, and the region, is it to halt or to stop or to reduce the ability of Joe Biden to return to the JCPOA? No, these uh, the series of peace deals that uh, we've cut with uh, moderate uh, Arab states uh, is a very meaningful um, development and a very positive development. It has nothing to do with a, a certain administration. It means that uh, more and more Arab countries are recognizing Israel as a meaningful uh, partner. Uh, and I, I would say that Iran is part of, of, of this issue because they understand as uh, being Iranian uh, neighbors, neighbors of Iran, that the big menace, the big threat to the region is indeed Iran. So you might view it as a coalition of uh, stemming uh, radical uh, uh, jihad and uh, radical Islamic uh, uh, intentions of uh, the Iranian Republic. So I caught up with Elliot Abrams. He came through the region recently, Mike Pompeo also through the region. When he was in Israel, is it your understanding that this administration was seeking some kind of a coalition of the willing for a military strike on Iran? No, I, I, I don't know. Uh, again, because I'm currently not uh, in the government. Um, Certainly, you are the, politically the, connected. So, what what, what I, was the purpose of their trip? You are, you are at the heart of politics of Israel, sir. Um, so, you, you must know what's discussed. I'm, you know, the, what, what what has been discussed and been done over the past uh, four years with the outgoing administration uh, is a tremendous amount of effort on uh, stopping Iran. Uh, be it uh, the t taking out uh, Qasem Soleimani, who was the biggest troublemaker on the globe, uh, be it uh, the maximum pressure uh, sanctions on Iran. So uh, anything that has to do with stopping their nuclear ambitions and getting them to focus inward uh, certainly is uh, was being discussed. I can only hope that the incoming administration, the Biden administration, uh, will understand, and uh, I'm sure uh, President-elect Biden uh, does not desire to have uh, uh, Iran go nuclear on, uh, on his term. So these are the sort of things we're going to be uh, discussing with the Biden uh, administration. And that new administration, what is that going to mean for Israel in, in regards to its Iran policy? What worries you most? 
Well, you know, uh, it's been very explicitly said and known that uh, the new administration is going to want to uh, return or, or form a, a deal with Iran. Now, per se, we are not against a, a deal. Uh, we just want to ensure that any deal that is signed with Iran indeed stems their uh, nuclear uh, uh, weapon capabilities and stops them from exporting terror. So uh, what we'll do and what, what we'll try and persuade uh, in, in our discussions is to take advantage mm -hmm. of the uh, maximum pressure sanctions to get Iran indeed to, to stop and dismantle its uh, uh, nuclear uh, military program. And, and that's, uh, that's going to be the focus. And, you know, I, I hope uh, we'll be able to reach uh, common ground there. Naftali, the country is, Israel's going to the, the polls, we understand it could be for the fourth time in, in less than two years. Now, your, your party is surging in the polls. You said that you plan to be prime minister. Can you commit now here with me this morning on Bloomberg that you won't nominate, you will not nominate Netanyahu for re-election when the votes are in? This is your chance. Well, I can commit uh, that uh, once we do declare elections, if and when, and it's not uh, sure at all, I'll, I'll be the first one to come to your um, uh, program here and uh, explain exactly who I think uh, should be Israel's next uh, prime minister. Uh, what I can say is that Israel does need to, to you know, restore its energy, restore its vigor, uh, and uh, be strong the way uh, we, we, we were and uh, united. So um, I think we do need new leadership in Israel, but uh, we don't have elections quite yet. <coughs> and when we do, I'll be happy to come over.